Hello and welcome back to our third part in our Super Data Science How to Build a Chatbot series. Then, as a quick recap, in the last video, we learned to set up our environment, we downloaded Anaconda, we learned about setting up a contained environment so we can install our packages, modules within that and not interfere with anything else on your machine, and our import statements. Basically, we've got everything ready to set up and now we're ready to work with our data. Also, another quick piece of information, the code snippets for this tutorial is available on the Super Data Science website. Link is in the description. All right, first things first. Before we get going, we need the data. Before we can get the data path in, we actually need the data itself. So please see the following link. We're going to go to github.com slash tflearn slash tflearn dot github dot io slash tree slash master slash resources. Take the following link, and we want to download the Shakespeare input dot txt. Okay. Once that file is downloaded, please make sure that it's pathed into the correct directory, the correct directory that you're working with in your Jupyter Notebook and in Anaconda. If you're working from a terminal, etc., the same. Just make sure it's pathed in. Okay, so now we're gonna be looking at three main things here. We're gonna be looking at elements of natural language processing. So we're going to be using uh, pickling in essentially to serialize the text, to pass it into matrices, because if you think about it, we're analyzing data, textual data, not numerical data. So the data needs to be assigned values. Otherwise, how is the machine going to learn from it? How is it going to be recognized from other text? That's really what we use pickling for. I highly suggest that you take a, a deeper look into pickling. It also converts the data into bytes that allows you to run it quicker, store it, etc., etc. So that's what we're going to be doing with the following. And for some general information, if you ever you know, adding on to this chatbot or you're working on projects in the future and you're looking to convert or pass in textual data um, with numerical values. You can take a look at Pandas. They have uh, Git dummies and you also can take a look at um, Scikit-learn. has one hot encoding, some great uh, libraries that will help you and your methods, your machine models learn from textual data. We're also going to be, as we progress, that you will see we'll be using uh, a sequence to sequence model. Now a sequence to sequence, model is a type of recurrent neural net okay it consists of two recurrent neural nets an encoder that processes the input and a decoder that generates the output which will be running our data through it we'll also be using uh, lstm again tensorflow please visit tensorflow whenever you get the chance just read through documentation it's it's you know where we are using tf learn but it's modeled, you know, high level API that's modeled off of TensorFlow. So as we proceed, you will see that we're going to use an LSTM with our sequence to sequence. And to give you an idea what a LSTM is or long short term memory is a type of recurrent neural network. The architecture within this type of recurrent neural net allows forward and backward connections between neurons. Now, I want to keep us moving quick. So do a brief breakdown to get our data set for this. We are pickling, pickling serialization, adding bytes to our data. We need to have a file that we can uh, write the bytes back in. And this is essentially what we're doing. We're setting our path, um, our cardiac pickle. If we don't have a path set, it's, it's going to pull the data from here. We need to set our max length. We're, lo we're loading our car IDX. And we also need to, you know, set our sequence max length, our redundancy step. We need to dump the pickle so we can use, so we can store models and we need to write the bytes. Overall, the key takeaway is we're using pickling. We need to set our path to the file. If not, we're using this. And we are using our car IDX to pull the data up in the future to use, run, reuse, and go from there. All right. All that being said, we're modeling off an RNN or recurrent neural net. Now, RNNs are hugely popular amongst natural language processing tasks because they are operating not as the normal feed forward. You know, these are neural nets that are they are making use of sequential information. Now, a traditional neural network, you basically assume all inputs and outputs are independent of each other, but for NLP, you know, you want to be able to predict the next words that are coming and what helps is to know the words that have come before it. Essentially, you have to think that RNNs have memory. They capture information that have been calculated so far. You know, it's not, again, directly feed forward uh, working in that one linear direction. These are connected sequences. Now, I understand it is a lot to take in LSDM, sequence to sequence modeling, RNN. As we progress, hopefully it becomes more clear. If not, please ask questions. Research, Stack Overflow, Google, you know, just 
Keep diving into documentation and it'll become more clear. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the Super Data Science channel to get up-to-date information. Please comment, like, share the video, and we will be moving on to the next part in our chatbot series.